So how did you start with The King's Body? Where did the idea come from? When did you start making it? This film is a commission film, so mm. it's a film that wouldn't have existed if it wasn't commissioned. It's like a ghost film in a way. Who commissioned it? It's commissioned by the um, Guimarães Capital of Culture, mm. uh, which Guimarães is the, is the place where Portugal was born. Mm. Uh, and it, that's where, not where our first king uh, was born, because we, that, that's also a legend, that's part of the legend. We don't really know if he's from there, there's, because it's like the 12th century, so there's not so many written things about him, uh, or if he's from there or from another city further south in what at the time was not Portugal, mm. because uh, it was him who created Portugal. Uh, and so there were several films commissioned by this uh, capital of culture by a guy, by a, a guy, a programmer called João Lopes. Uh, he um, he proposed me to make a film, mm. and I I didn't really know what what this film would be about. And but I had read uh, an article, a, a newspaper article about. Um, about this uh, scientist woman that she wanted to open the, the tomb of uh, François Rix, our first king, which is still in, a, in Coimbra, uh, in a, it's a city in the center of Portugal. Uh, and uh, when she was like almost like trying to, you know, to open it up, there was this order came that from the, uh, from the Monuments uh, Institute of Conservancy or whatever, that said, she couldn't. Um, and so, uh, because it's, and there's a lot of legends about how was this king, how, how was he physically, how was he intellectually, but physically, it, mostly because there were, there were, as there are not really records from the time. The, 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 the earlier text that exists is from the 14th century. And so I had this idea of, doing something about this myth yeah. and about uh, a myth that is in a, in a, at the same time physical. Yeah. Um, and so it started like that. Uh, I, I had this idea of making a casting for, for, the, for, the, for the first king of Portugal. And so I went to, or we went with, with, with the assistant, uh, with my assistant, he went first to try to, to Galicia, Galicia uh, in, in the north of Spain, it's over Portugal, where they speak a language that is still similar to the, um, or it's similar, it's more similar to the language that was spoken at the time in the medieval mm. era uh, in, in Portugal, in Spain, even if Portugal didn't exist and Spain didn't exist, of course, it was like old kingdoms, small kingdoms. And uh, this guy, uh, uh, Don Fonse Henriques, he's our first king, he's uh, half French, half uh, Sp uh, Spaniard. Mm -hmm. So, and I, so we, we found these guys, and there's, the myth is all about strength, about a hero, mm -hmm. about a superhero, in a way. And so it's, it's also a film about a superhero, mm -hmm. it's a superhero movie. <laughs> <laughs> is that why there's the, the green screen? Like the digital? Uh, yes, and then I, I had this idea of doing and uh, of making these castings against the green against a green screen. Uh, but, but in the in the beginning, I didn't really know what I was going to put in the in the green screen. That's also why I decided sometimes I I kept the green screen because I, for me it was it made sense that uh, I was not pretending it not to be a green screen. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's uh, during a long time in the film, there's still, you, see, you can see the green screen. Well, it kind of exposes the cinema apparatus because you're also showing statues which are another art form. And you're kind of, in some way, comparing cinema as a representational tool and, and sculpture as a representational tool. How, how, how did you kind of deal with the, the, the statues and what they represent and what the artists that made them were, how they were contributing to the myth? Because if you think about these guys, they, they, they made their own bodies, they, they transformed their own bodies. Uh, and if you, like, two, f not my last film, but two films ago, it's also about, 
it's about transsexual. It was a film about transsexuals to Dalek Man, which is also the characters had changed their bodies in the way to, to, to become someone that were closer to what they think they were then. And so, uh, in a way, these guys is a little bit, not all of them, because we didn't, I didn't interview just uh, bodybuilders. Mm. Some are just regular guys or guys that want to be actors or... Mm. Uh, but uh, but this, the, the image, they, they, how they see themselves, there's a kind of a narcissist, uh, like a mise-en-scene. They, 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 it's like they, they, they have their own mise-en-scene of their own bodies. They, oh, they, they, yeah. they put a little bit more there, a little bit more there. It's the... The costume or... Uh, it's like a pre prefabricated body. Mm, yeah. Uh, or it's, there's something that is not like natural. Mm. And uh, I was playing with that... Uh, with that, the fact that it's not natural. But I was also, I think it's kind of an, I don't know, playful film also. Mm. And I, we've been doing like, the, the film that was here last year, the last time I saw Macau was also like a playful film. And I, I wanted to play with this, there's a, a great rivalry between Portugal and Spain. Mm. It's like a traditional rivalry. Also because we were invaded by the Spaniards who kicked them out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, at, a, at a certain point of our history, so, uh, but those, uh, it's still, it's much more diluted nowadays, but um, as everything is diluted in Europe now, it's like uh, everything, every country became, there's this European communi community, whatever it is, that dilutes everything, dilutes borders, but dilutes also culture, and in a way it's very, it's also Portugal is suffering from that right now, and the film also is a. Por I think in the end, it ended up to be a portrait of uh, how people feel, like unemployment. I was not uh, looking for that for those answers from the from the guys I interviewed. They were, but most of them they also they responded to this casting because they wanted to get a job, mm. and that was in a way very uh, moving and uh, very how do you say tough. To, to, to see these guys that were un unemployed or have very precarious, or they, they've just been un unemployed and they're trying to do something else. Uh, something that is not really what they thought they were, would be doing in their lives, I think. Uh, not that they, they made it, but it's, I think in a way, it, it, it became, in some of the guys, I think it became, it's very poignant. Uh, what they say, and uh, and so the, the film also reshaped itself during those casting sessions we had, and uh, and we, we did it in two times. We went up to the to to Gal Galicia twice, uh, first to to interview, to make general interview, and then to shoot with a because we we made the replica of the of because not just the, the body of this king or what everything that is connected about this king, about his life, about his exploits, is all, all, it's all a myth in a way because even like one of the most, the place where he was a confirmed king is a, is a place that now we know it's not in the place that uh, people say it was. So everything, but that most of history is a lot, there's not really facts. And all, I remembered of like that, the phrase in, in the Man Who Shot Liberty mm, Ball. Yes. It all started to make sense. Uh, and, um, and so the film reshaped itself and, uh, and, and through editing, uh, we, and then I was looking for images. At the time I was, I was doing the, the editing was made in several periods. And at the time I was, um, I was traveling with, with, um, with, with the, the last time I saw Macau a lot. And so I had this idea of clouds, of shooting clouds, and like all the, the, the shots that you see of clouds were, doing, were made during this um, traveling with the other film. Uh, and also I wanted to do the film in a way, like myself, I shot it myself. Even, my, even if my, my director of photography, Rui Possas, was there in the first, two days of the shooting when we were in Galicia because I, I wanted him to, to, to make like the, the first setup of the, of the lightning. Mm. 
because I don't I didn't really know how to do that. And but uh, but then it was kind of a replication of that for all every a different body but the same lightning all the time. And we shot it in with two cameras. There is a kind of travel component to the, what the green screen transforms to at some points. And I was wondering if you could talk about that, like the moving camera on roads, etc. Also, because one of the things for um, I wanted to shoot something in in the in the in the real city of Guimarães and this in the city now, uh, and not just to shoot I don't know old stuff because the king had lived. There are some buildings that are still, they are still remaining more or less very changed, of course. As during the Salazar period, in the, like the, the dictatorship we had before 74, uh, all the castles, all the monuments were redone as they were, as the, the way that the regime wanted them to, to like castles uh, had to appear like what our dictator thought a castle was. Mm. So, and that city suffered from that also. It was, you know, and mo a lot of monuments were redone into the way of this nationalistic uh, ideal of what uh, our, the birth of, uh, uh, of our country should look like. Mm. And, um, and so I, I wanted to shoot there in, the, in, in that place, and, and I had this idea of I just I did a lot of in the car myself with I don't know these traveling shots of uh, through the, the, the streets yeah, of, of yeah. Guimarães nowadays, uh, and then we tried uh, and but in the beginning we we I, I tried a, a lot of things, uh, and in the beginning I thought the film. You, I wouldn't show, as I said, I wouldn't show the, the green screen. But then I decided that it didn't make sense that I didn't show the green screen. Uh, and there's also there's a place that was also built uh, in the time of, uh, of Salazar, of, of our dictator, in the in the 40s, late 40s, 50s, where there's it's called the Portugal of the Little People that you see in the in, oh, the, yeah. in the in the in the film. And it's a place there is it that. It's in the same city where our king is buried. Uh, and uh, it's a, a small scale Portugal uh, of all like the monuments, not of just of Portugal, but all our ex colonies, because it was the time, when, uh, at the time we had, we still had these ex colonies. And so I, uh, I also wanted to, and uh, there's, we, we see, you see also a picture of Salazar dressed as, a, as Don Fonse Henriques because in a way he was comparing himself to the, to the, to the founder's myth. Uh, and, and so it's, there's a lot of irony in the film, I think, about, uh, about how we see ourselves. Does that apply to the, the bird motif? Like there are a lot of birds I noticed that you're shooting in this. How does that, is that maybe like a transformative or a traveling metaphor? Maybe unintentional, it's just something <laughs> I noticed. Yeah, yeah, no, they're not intentional, but so yeah, I have a bird, <laughs> a bird t shirt. Um, but yeah, and my next film is called The Ornithologist, so it's mm. about birds. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the narcissistic gaze, and I'm wondering about the director's gaze and the casting because. You, there are the comments, the, the directions that are given to the, the, the men auditioning, but there's also a kind of the camera that's segmenting the body and that kind of on-screen, off-screen power dynamic. Um, yeah, it's very simple. The, the, like, I, I, I more or less did this all to all. I, I, I asked the same questions. Yeah. I, I, I asked them to strip. And then uh, some stripped totally, some didn't. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't going to force them. It's just up to them. I think you, you're right. As you, when you talked about sculpture, yeah, I, as there's a lot of sculptures in the in the in, in the film, I filmed these sculptures because there's no portraits of the king, because there's no, there was no photographs. Of course, no, even not no paintings of the of this king from the 12th century. So uh, it's. There are some, I don't know, some images that were made later on, but based on nothing. How do you put a face in, a, in something that you don't know? The only thing that exists, 
it's just uh, I don't know. Not even you don't even know if there are bones inside because they, they we, the people don't allow to open the coffin. So uh, perhaps there's nothing inside. Uh, and so it's a film also about an emptiness. Mm. It's the only way this uh, scientist she wanted to using these new methods uh, to to try to find out if she, he he was really a, such a big man as the legend says. Mm. Because during the, our history, two of our kings uh, opened the, 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 that, that coffin, and even he was changed from one, one mausoleum to another one, from the, I think it was in the 15th century, uh, for one, because the, the, the very first one was like medieval, was very austere, and now he's in a Gothic that you see in the, in the film, in a Gothic uh, uh, tomb very elaborate and uh, uh, and he was taken out of the of the uh, he's, he was exhumed you say mm, exhumed? Yeah, exhumed, yeah. yeah he was exhumed and exposed uh, because these in a way these these other kings that were his followers uh, wanted to compare themselves with him and there was this there's the, it's what they read in the in the we did a lot of research of what is written about how he looked like and since the and I think the first text is from the f really from the 16th century because the earlier ones were lost uh, and um, and so they compare themselves with the, always with this image of someone that in a way was his body was uncorrupt uncorrupted it was as if he was sanctified in a way and he's been sanctified uh, and I think there was even a desire to make him, to turn him into a saint, but that never happened, and it won't happen, of course, <laughs> because we, we like Portugal is not the connection between church, and uh, and uh, and and politics was broken in the in the seventy four revolution. But you, you mentioned he's kind of sanctified, uh, and there's the tattoos are supposed to be like a kind of. Um, you know, the body's a temple and, and, and you're kind of corrupting it by getting tattoos. Uh -huh. and I'm wondering what that, the tattoo, the discussion of tattoos in the film meant. Uh, because one of the most beautiful uh, old texts that, they, that still remain tells and one, they, they, they read that, that text or they read a part of it. Uh, once he was, he was, uh, he was uh, this king was talking to, to because he wanted to be confirmed as a, uh, uh, as a king of a new country. Mm -hmm. And uh, he met with this uh, cardinal coming from Rome. Uh, and um, he stripped himself. And so there's still the idea of stripping down. Mm -hmm. That, uh, uh, that I, I, I'm, I asked these guys to do. And he showed the, the wounds, the scars he had to this cardinal as if the body would tell a story mm. of the battles. So in this, the, in this part, because he had one of the knees, he had broken, he also, one of the knees was broken in, in one, of the, one of the battles to conquer one of the cities. So each city, he had a mark, he had a scar for, for that battle. Mm. And so his body was also telling stories. And I think I more or less compared with, like, with this idea of, of tattooing your your own body in because you, yeah it's the, the, how the guy says he the, the guy that explains what does it what does it mean that that and that and that it's the same in a way so it's it's more or less it, we didn't evolve so much <laughs> <laughs> since the medieval times and, and they're they're acquainted with their own story but some of the men ha have less knowledge of history uh, yeah. and and that's a kind of interesting relationship because one in particular does have a fairly strong knowledge of the story of the king, but the others kind of didn't. And what does that suggest about modern Portugal? But, but you, you also have to think that they are not, they are Spaniards, so, but even Portuguese people know more about, yeah. uh, usually, or at least you learn in school. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, I think it just shows that people also don't care, because even in, if, if you think in Spain, there's still royalty, there's a royal family. And I was recently in Galicia, and like I was, I went to the to the bathroom, and on the door there was this uh, by royal decree. <laughs> <laughs> this bathroom is cleaned yeah. by at that time or that time. Or, 
So you see, it's, they still are faced with this, but they really don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I think it uh, talks a lot about disillusionment also about, about people, about these rulers. Uh, and as people in Portugal are disillusioned about politics and, uh, and if you think about it, like if, there, if there's a government of right and left, it's, it's kind of like almost the same all the time. People, even though I think it's still a difference, but, uh, uh, but uh, I think it talks a lot about this, the, the fact that people are, are really unhappy with, what, uh, with, with their own countries, mm. in a way, and especially in, in, in Europe, and because uh, we, we are really, uh, there's a really a big crisis and, uh, and uh, life is tough. Is that why the stories kind of shift from uh, the king to their own personal stories? Like you, as, to the? To, as to the, the model's own stories, like their own history seems to be more of an interest as the film goes along. Also, you don't know the stories of everyone. Yeah. I just, uh, I then, yeah, then it's like through editing the film was built and uh, as any other film. <laughs> and it, uh, it has, a, how do you say, it has its own rhythm and flow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for me it was natural to, 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 to build it that way. And, and we were kind of touching on it a bit, but what is the role of cinema in this film, like as a reflection of cinema and cinema as a way of transforming or, or rep representing and transforming? I think there's also a kind of a, like a voyeuristic, mm. uh, because if you think about it's me, or I, 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 I shot all the, it's, I, I shot myself, mm -hmm. these guys, and there's a kind of this voyeuristic, uh, uh, which is my, me, mm. uh, looking at these guys uh, in their beauty and also in their, uh, how do you say that, the exaggeration of, I wouldn't call them grotesque, even if they are a little bit grotesque, some, some of them. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, what interested me more was like to have some individuals also in that. And, in the, and so I think it's why you say there's their, their own story comes up. Uh, because it's, I think it's the most, uh, I don't know, emotional moments. Why, like, like the guy who, to, who, who tells about that he was in jail. Or, and so like their tattoos become also had another significance also. There's the, the suggestion of the, the sword as well. We, we haven't really touched on that. But like, did the sword operate as any type of metaphor for you? The king's sword. The king's sword. That's part of the myth. Yeah. Uh, and if you think a king, the sword, this one is ringing well. Should I answer? Yeah. No. Yeah? Sure. No, are you sure? Yeah. It's just unknown. <laughs> I'm not answering to unknown <laughs> people. <laughs> to? To? Hello. Okay, okay. Okay, Jean Ruiz says hi. Hello? Yeah, yeah, Jean Ruiz says hi. Jean Ruiz says hi to you. Yeah, we miss you here. Bye. Ciao. Uh, but there's the, also the way they, this word is very, very uh, heavy. And it, that's what was one part of the myth. Mm. How, how this man, how a man could, could lift a sword mm. that, and how he could battle with such a big sword. And uh, it's, of course, kind of a, a phallic uh, symbol. Mm. And, and the way they grab the sword, if you have, they, they hold it at, at their waist. Uh, because it's it's impossible to, to 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 really to 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 hold that sword, and I try to play with that also. Uh, 
And there's, there was the sword myth, but there was also the, the shield. There was one, a shield that, uh, but then it, it's, a sh of course, the sword, there's also, uh, it's, there's a sword in a museum in Portugal that is supposed to be uh, Don Fons Henrique's sword. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, or more recently, I don't know exactly when, but uh, it's proven that it's a, sw a sword that was casted in 16th century. So okay. it's not possible yeah, yeah. To, <laughs> to be his sword. So, but it's always that, the, 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 that idea of finding an object, finding an image to the myth. And it's the quest, my quest was a kind of like the same. And there was the, the, the shield of the king that then was lost, there was, after when he died, it was put over the, 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 the tomb of the king. And there was this, uh, there's this uh, written thing that whatever, whenever another king died, this shield would drop from and would fall on the ground. It's also a myth, you don't know that, but uh, so it's like, he's, he, in a way, it's like a three thing. It's like his body, his sword, and his his, uh, his shield. And uh, but as that shield, uh, I, I try to use these symbolic uh, elements to to build up a person out of. And if you think about it, it's it's a body that is built out of many pieces of other bodies. It's like a multi-head, multi-arm, multi-legged body, multi whatever. You think about it. And here that's done with the models, like they're all combined to make one? Yeah, if and also, but also about the impossibility of, mm. of course, of finding one that is the, the one. Mm. And what, what are you working on now? Uh, I'm working on this film about birds. Yeah, how far along is it? Uh, I'm going to shoot it uh, next spring. And it's a feature? It's a feature, yeah. But I'm also... I'm still with Jean Rui, that's just yep. called. We're still going to make another short film in Macau. Oh, still great. this year. Yeah. So we're going back there. And I'm also, what am I going to? Uh, I'm, I don't know if you've seen a, a short film that I did that was in Cannes last year, the Morning of St. Angel's no. Day. No. no. Yeah, I'm turning that into an installation. It will be my first time installation or like thing into the art world, I don't know. I arrived for, for, for a museum in, in South Korea, so they asked us both, we are going to do an exhibition that is opening in uh, next November, and they asked us to do a piece uh, together or apart, so we're doing something that I'm turning that short film, I'm doing another editing, like changing it completely, and to do, and Jean Hui is showing some of his drawings. Mm. How, how are you transforming it from a short into an installation? Because if you had seen it, it's, it's a very... It's just people walking. Mm. It's about... Uh, it's about uh, we have uh, the uh, Lisbon's patron saint is Saint Anthony's, mm. and in, it's the, in the 13th of June. Mm. Uh, people go out and they party a lot and they, they are very drunk and very not just drunk. <laughs> and then when they come back home, once I was, uh, I, I went out, but, and I didn't really drink. And uh, I took this, the first subway home, and they were like, the, 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 the subway was filled with zombies, you know, mostly. So it's kind of like a zombie movie okay. of people returning home. Uh, and so, and it's set in, in, the, in, 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 a, in, a, in the neighborhood where I live. Mm. And so it's kind of also like a portrait of that neighborhood. And it's very kind of geometrical portrait mm -hmm. of people in architecture. And so I thought it was a good thing to do, to turn it itself into a, it would, it would work well in a way, I think. Uh, I'm still working on it. And mm -hmm. It was a film that I made while I was a teacher at Le Frenois in France. No, okay. So, and it, I was a teacher, not just of film, but people connected with visual arts, and I think I was infected by that. Oh, I see. <laughs> Anything in particular? Uh, what? Like any particular influence from the art world in that? Mm, no, not not some not not like something specific, but more like this idea of also experimenting in a less narrative, 
uh, that I've been doing in several of like the later shorts. Yeah. So because I've been doing a lot of shorts, which is in a way strange. But uh, you're still doing them. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know. But but I they felt like this film was commissioned, so it's in a way. But uh, I made another film uh, called Majong with Zhuang Hui that was also a commissioned film, mm -hmm. and it's also a portrait of a place of a Chinatown in. in in, uh, in the north of Portugal is a commission for, for by the Villa do Conde Short Film Festival, which is a festival in the north of Portugal. And so, but like in between these commissioned films and the films that I really, I, uh, not that I didn't want to make these films that, that were commissioned, but uh, I've been making a lot of them, uh, which is not normal for me in a way, because usually I, but it, it's also, it, live, it gets me the opportunity of experimenting in several directions. I, that's also, I think it's the most interesting thing with it. Is there anything you experimented with that's going to kind of find its way into the future? Like anything that you've enjoyed? Uh, I don't, it's hard to say a specific thing, yeah, yeah. but uh, of course I think it will end up, because whatever I, I think it's also like, Doing film is also a learning process, so and you, you build your own world. And out of the out of perhaps sometimes when you do a short film, you, you're more constrained. Mm. I, I don't know if you're or you're constrained in a different way. Perhaps it's not. not I think you're. All, I like to work with const, constraints. Mm. Constraints. Yeah. How do you say yeah. That? yeah. Constraints. Yeah. Yeah. Because I I think it's also there, also creative. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your own world, and I've noticed that a lot of your recent films have been very site-specific, like they're all about particular places. But that, I think it always, even there's a lot of ideas, fictional ideas that come from places yeah. where I want to shoot. And, uh, and like even mise-en-scene ideas that come from places. Uh, and what I find is the, the, the way that I think is the only way to shoot that place or that person. Uh, so, yeah, there are, I always try to, for me the physical is very important. So, this was a, in a way a challenge to, to find a body out of so many physical pieces. <laughs> and in, in the end it's not even a physical body. It's like a green screen body or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.